question, can you imagine a life without Groupon? What would people say? Maybe they would say yes. Now, due to the recent upturn in the economy, and due to their uprising competitors as well, we want to ensure that the answer to that is no. People cannot imagine a life where they're not using Groupon. And this is why we're here today. So good afternoon. We are AKJ Consulting, and we are so pleased to have the opportunity today to share with you our strategy. I'm here with me today as a tool on James, and today we're going to help you achieve your objective, which is to regain your competitive stock prices and improve your business model validity by enhancing your differentiation, improving your revenues, and also looking at improving your margins as well. Now today we looked at three key challenges. So firstly, we looked at your high operating leverage impeding your current margins. Now we were able to solve this through driving local growth and also 3P growth as well through our unique strategies in that sector. Now also looking at the lack of differentiation in the cyclical market that you're faced with. Now we're tackling this by creating a new business boost strategy to really regain a predictive revenue model. Now thirdly, we're looking at the suboptimal customer journey and loyalty that customers are currently going through, leaving them with only $155 spend um, on most of their deals, oftentimes one time per annually, and we're increasing this through personalization utilizing AI and machine learning. Now overall, this allows you to enter into a higher margin business um, offerings and generate sustainable business models that improves your, um, your free cash flows and also generates your profits um, to increase from 46 to 54 percent. I'll be now passing off to a tool to dive further into the analysis. Thank you. There are three core challenges that we see today that are affecting your profitability and also the negative sentiment around your stock. Now, now let me know the first challenge. We're looking at the high operating leverage that is impeding your margins. We see that there's a high fixed cost structure within your current company, and also the business that you have are offering high cost of goods sold, which are affecting your profitability in the company. So how do your current offerings affect your end bottom line? Your one to products, which make up 52% of your revenues, only provide 10 to 20% margins. And if you look at a 40% fixed cost structure that you're having, you're actually losing money in this segment. Next, looking at the local and other service-based offerings, they're providing higher margins. However, it requires higher customization to really acquire the customers uh, in a and future business. And finally, the three P products they, de they de allow you to decrease the infrastructure that you need to hold inventory, and also increases the margins that you're, that you're going to be getting. So what we see is that the current margins, 45 percent. This is the gross margin, is not sustainable because of the high operating leverage of the firm. Now the question you have to ask is, are you a goods-based company or a service-based company? Because currently, 52% suggest a goods-based traditional retailing company, whereas what we need to see is a transition into a service-based company where you can really diversify and collect sustainable revenues moving forward. This will not only allow you to sort of get the predictable revenues, but also decrease SG&A and COGS going forward. So the key takeaway here is your high operating expenses at the moment and sales of low margin of the 1P goods reduces your free cash flow generation. So the, now the question is, why should you focus on being a service provider? Reduce your infrastructure that you need for inventory, increase recurring revenues and margins, and deploy the cash that you have currently sitting on your balance sheet into high ROE projects. Delving into the second challenge today, we're looking at the key differentiator of your company. Currently, the key differentiator is not the service that you're providing directly, it's that your size. And this is something that we need to change. Uh, if you really want to look at sustainability in the 10, 20 year time horizon. So why is this a long term threat? The question is, there's cyclical demand for coupons. Coupons arise when people are looking for cost savings and as a result of a strong economy, coupons are generally not as desired in comparison to a weak economy. Where, and competitors who also choose to focus on niche, mar niche products that they're selling, they'll be able to move quicker and adapt and as a result could affect your long term profitability. Now, to ensure the sustainability of your revenues, it's important to provide incentives to these vendors that uh, to re help retain partnerships in times where they're not making, they're not actually making money by using your service. Now, the question is, what does Groupon have that businesses actually value? You have access to customer data, customer preferences, and this data can be used to provide insights to your vendors and really be able to retain that relationship going forward and really provide that sustainable revenue. So the key takeaway here is currently, cyclical demand and low barriers to entry limit your market share expansion. However, transitioning data into insights will help you increase your vendor satisfaction. And finally, you're looking at the suboptimal customer journey and loyalty that's being created as a result. Currently, the current platform is limited in customer personalization, 
and it also impedes the customer journey. What you're really looking at is what are the key challenges right now? The base products that are changing frequently within your service. And as a result, the customers are not really looking at what is their preference, what, is, what are they looking for. You're looking at lack of personalization and as a result, low customer volume. Each, the basket size for each customer is reducing over time and this is as a result of low satisfaction rate. So now what is the impact of this poor journey felt by the customer? Lesser customers are demanding for Groupon and this is noticed by the lower customer base that we're seeing year over year within, within your company. Now the question is, there's limited incentive to repeat business with Groupon as competitors are better at predicting the future needs. Now how do you improve your predictability? Customer data that can be used to integrate their needs into personalized recommended solutions so that basket size and number of customers increases in the future. Key takeaway here is current platforms create barriers that reduce your profitability. The consideration we're looking for in the first challenge is that you need to focus on high margin businesses and invest your excess cash from the cash in the balance sheet into high ROE projects. For the second record, uh, for the second challenge, we're looking at <coughs> predictable revenue and utilizing data to create a differentiable experience. And finally, increasing the emphasis on personalization of the customer to really increase not only basket size but also volume going through your company. I'll be passing it off to James to discuss the alternatives today. And looking at all your, all your alternatives today, we base it on four main decision criteria. Is it within your current capacity as Groupon? Does it improve differentiation, not only in the short term, but in the long term? Does it create a reasonable margin and fix the margin issues with your SGMA? And finally, is this going to help you with your long term stock appreciation? Now, when looking at refocusing the international and looking at expanding internationally again, this shifts away from your core competency and it's too early to look at with your current situation. When looking at pushing first party retail, that 1P retail of you currently buying the product and reselling it, this actually creates low margins and increases your higher fixed costs. Now we're looking at service oriented company, moving towards your 3P and looking more towards the services and local experiences. This improves your margins and decreases your SGMAs. And finally, when looking at data utilization, this helps you, as Groupon, create predictable revenue streams moving forward. And that's what we're recommending today for the second, two, uh, the last two with service-oriented company as well as data utilization solutions. I'll be now passing it off to Kim to dive deeper into these recommendations. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the very first recommendation, which is driving the local and 3P business segment growth. So in terms of driving the local and 3P growth, we start with the key consideration of the need to focus on the high-margin business offering and also to invest in the excess cash that's currently just sitting idle on the balance sheet. So we're doing this to create an increased awareness and also physical concept locations to really drive the local business offerings and also drive our 1P uh, uh, low-cost products towards the 3P business line. So first, let's look at the local growth. So this starts with increased awareness. So what we're looking at is targeting more of the local customers who currently have the Groupon application. We're going to be um, increasing their ability to uh, purchase services through Groupon, driving that local factor through geo notifications. So maybe pop-up pop notifications that occur on their application on their phone when they walk by a store that actually has a Groupon offer at that time. Additionally, increasing your targeted advertising online, utilizing keyword um, searches and also cookie history. Now this has another segment as well. What about people who may not have Groupon or may not have been in this location before? Now this is the physical concept locations. A great way to get a service out there is to really create a unique marketing strategy, but also a strategy that drives sales. So what this does is a physical concept store that will first be piloted um, with 10 locations. It will have help users kind of walk into this physical store in a tourist location, such as a hotel, and actually have the help from a local Groupon guide who will help them look at what experiences are offered and services are offered in their location and actually help them download the app and utilize a first purchase using the Groupon application on their phone. This will really allow them to um, drive the increase in service revenues and local revenues coming from Groupon and also kind of drive new customers as well. Now if we look at the customer journey, a local guide will help make users aware of the service in this area and an emphasis will be based on Groupon Plus, so driving that um, increased restaurant traffic as well. The users will download the Groupon application using free Wi-Fi, so really appealing to tourists that might not even have data in that location. And also creating the group, the group on local guide will help customers select an experience that's really tailored to that location and then pay via the application. Now the second part of this recommendation is to shift some of the 1P 
revenues towards the three key more profitable business segments. Now this is done by targeting low cost products that currently cost less than $25. And this is generating the lowest margins for Groupon. So firstly, you're going to utilize your sales team to notify some of the 1P sellers in the low cost range to try to switch them to the 3P model. You're going to use a discount incentive of switching the, um, the, the margins that you're taking from the 3P sales from 15 to 12% for their very first year. Additionally, this allows you to decrease your inventory storage um, due to the less inventory holding from the 1P business model. The key takeaway here is by increasing your local and 3P leads, you're able to create um, higher margin business segments, increase your brand awareness, and also invest some of your sitting cash in your growth opportunities. Now let's look at the second recommendation. This is your new business boot. So how do you target some of the cyclical challenges that you're currently facing in the economy? Who consistently needs group bonds? This is new businesses. So we're creating a refocused sales team strategy and emphasizing the unique value proposition with data to really drive um, sales with new merchants to group on. So what you're looking at is at reducing cyclical dependency. So firstly, you're going to have a sales team restructuring to target new businesses. So you're going to be moving part of your sales team into a specialized new business segment. Now what you're going to do is kind of emphasize a sales, successful sales force model that they use to really drive um, traction with new customers. So what this will be doing is 80% of the sales team will be focused on new merchant acquisition and 20% will be focused on building those relationships and closing those deals. Additionally, you're going to improve the value proposition to, to those new businesses through a Start with Groupon program. The Start with Groupon program is a data subscription model which gives what these new businesses lack, insight on who their customer actually is. For only $49 a month, you'll be able to provide them with accurate data that enable them to successfully start up their businesses. What this recommendation does is increase emphasis on acquiring new businesses, really focusing on detracting the dependency on the cyclical business market. Now let's look at the third recommendation here, which is personalization through AI and machine learning. Now we need to increase the customer um, experience and loyalty within Groupon. Now we're going to be doing this through the customized machine learning experience. Now as I mentioned in the very introduction, imagine life without Groupon. How can we ensure that people say that they can't imagine life without Groupon? This is through creating a truly personalized experience, through an opt-in program that aligns with GDPR. So, you'll be able to collect sufficient data on the customers through user preferences, user search history, and also the user profiles. Users will be able to see different advertisements and different products on their Groupon page and click either save for later or not interested. By the simple action of clicking the yes or no button, your software will be able to learn quickly what these consumers like and more accurately target with your model. This will allow you to more optimize and have a higher purchase rate, increasing the average basket size and also the amount of baskets purchased per consumer per year. This also aligns with your geo notifications and creates your data availability and you're actually selling to the new businesses, really reinforcing the other recommendations that we mentioned here today. So this allows you to create a differentiable experience that really is setting yourself apart from competitors and also increasing your customer spend and satisfaction, aligning with your revenue goal. I'll now pass it off to James to dive a little bit more into the implementation. Now the big question here is how? How are we going to implement these recommendations today to ensure your success for a long-term sustainable future? With the first recommendation of driving local as well as 3 peak growth, it starts with an internal software development um, pivot. This is taking your current team to, to work on the geo notification stack as well as heavily investing into your data entry to ensure that the locations of each point and so the geotyping works moving forward. <coughs> the second section of this is actually pivoting your concept location and training these local guides that's going to be for the 10 pilot locations, which are going to be located in LA for a period of six months. Now, why LA? LA is a great location to start off with because of your current existence there, as well as the seasonalities that don't exist. This is a long-term warm weather where there's constant tourism coming in and out. Now, in terms of geo-notification, this is going to be data entry based on those local locations for services that you currently have, uh, have on your Groupon application um, platform. Diving a little deeper into this, those geo notifications, as said previously, are for these local services. The pilot is all based on gaining new signups, as well as getting those current users to use and open your app more often. And finally, it's moving those 3P to 1P. That's through the sales team contacting out to the low cost providers that are currently on your Groupon platform. What we're looking for in key performance indicators to ensure success are an increase in average app sign up um, for seven per week in the next three months. Additionally, a 25,000 user sign up, 
and a reducing your SG&A expense from 46% to 38%. Now the SG&A comes directly from that 3P to 1P um, transition, just to clarify. For the second re recommendation of moving to the new business boost, this is pivoting your current sales team to that 80-20 percentage, that 80% for procurement and that 20% for the signing on. This is going to be pivoting the positions for the first uh, six months of the new year. But the big focus here is actually on your advertising, getting those low new users to sign up. With advertising being focused on uh, demographics such as the younger millennials or the older generation, but in a lower income bracket, to ensure your consistent revenues moving forward. The advertising is focused on public transit as well as YouTube video testimonials, and your sales changes will be communicated through the necessity of change to follow up with metrics on change management and satisfaction rates of your employees. Now, so what defines success in each of these parts? Well, looking at your sales team, it's finalizing that 80-20 um, ratio. It's your advertising cost at 10 million at maximum for that first year, as well as the pilot being in Chicago. Now, why Chicago for this pilot specifically? This is so it doesn't interfere with the LA pilot and doesn't uh, interrupt any data collection on the success rates of either um, recommendation today. Chicago is also the home base of Groupon and already has long-term standing with the current customers and current users. Now, the key performance indicators are broken down into two categories. An increase in demographics of that younger audience specifically of 30%, as well as 50,000 signups within about three months. Now, for the third and last recommendation today, it's a personalization through AI. The first start of this is actually researching AI firms that are based in um, America. It involves contacting these firms as well as signing and the legality of this all. Now there's a heavy emphasis on the legality. This is because of GDPR standards internationally. These standards are key for your organization to move forward with our recommendations today. With this, you'll be integrating the AI that's created and developed and over a six month period with customized checklists being developed for the user signups as well as merchant signups. And the final part of this is an ongoing process of your current machine learning processes. Now the AI approach comes in two parts. The first is a checklist. This is a manual input from your users, both merchants and customers. But the second part being the machine learning itself. That's where you're going to differentiate yourself as Groupon and that's where you're going to create yourself as a necessity moving forward. Now to evaluate this. That AI company, the real criteria that you're looking for is that this company has worked with preset databases before. They're not starting from scratch. You already have a huge, mass amount of data, and they're going to use this data to start the pivots for machine learning and start the machines and your software to learn itself. The AI organization, we're putting a conservative um, project valuation at 25 million. Now, the key performance indicator really is an increased purchase from customers of 50%. This is in basket size over a six month period. I'll be now handing it up to a tool to dive deeper into finances. Thank you. So we're looking at the increments of cost as a result of our recommendation today. The main cost that we see is the actual development of the software and also the partnership within the AI to really be able to integrate the customer user experience. We've anticipated that to be $50 million and $25 million, really driving the cost in the first year. However, we're seeing that as a result of these service shops, lease expenses, and potential customer loss as a result of transferring from first party to third party could occur, and these are some costs that we've noted down. And on the benefits side, we see that subscription from the current customers as a result of 1.5% increased volume, and also a 1% increase in actual user base from year one, is leading to an $85 million increase in the first year, which is going to be grown at 10% annually, which is going to lead to an incremental profit of $72.5 million in year five, and an NPV of $145 million in the next five years. The two main risks we're looking at is the vendors that do not actually want to sell as a third party. We see that the, lot, the likelihood and severity is moderate. However, the mitigation is that we're going to offer them the direct consumer model, allow them to really engage in the profits that they would not be able to engage since they're pricing to us at a lower rate, and also be able to provide that data and really be able to hone in on what to improve next. And finally, we see that negative optics can be mitigated by the person uh, sold at a personalized level and also having the optics for the customer. So through our recommendations on increasing the emphasis on local, increasing your 3P revenues, and also looking at utilizing data, and also um, really reinforcing all these aspects to a new business boost, you'll be able to increase your revenues, increase your profitability, and most importantly, when the question is asked if people can live without Groupon, they will answer no. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to now open the floor to you. So the whole tactic with that was actually signing on those new merchants. 
is found to be the average price for a subscription-based service for a business just gaining insights on their current location of the industry knowledge. Are we undercharging them? In terms of gaining new traction, you're really looking at targeting those businesses that might not have any sales yet. And maybe it's their very first month in opening, so you can look at definitely switching to a higher, um, more profitable or higher income model in the future, maybe for businesses after their two years or three years of operating. But for initially targeting startups, a $50 rate is very fair. Why these, why this combination of three initiatives? When you pick and choose, why do you have to do all three? In terms of all three, we really see this as a multifaceted challenge that the business is currently facing. However, if we there is many different streams that have to really be targeted in order to have a comprehensive solution. You may be able to target utilizing data to create a more personalized experience, but because your business relies on both customers and also merchants, it's really essential that you have different types of strategies really targeting both ends of the spectrum. Have you compared the financials of the uh, competitors to see where they stand and how they uh, how they do? So what we see is that with competitors, the lesser that they're transitioning to the traditional buy and sell retail model they're really able to increase not only their gross margins, but also really be able to deploy that excess capital and invest in the software, software that they're providing to their customers. And this is one of the reasons why we're transitioning your firm, Groupon, into being a lesser of goods provider and more into a service provider to really be able to capture that sg that's lost currently and also the, the cogs that's lost currently to be really able to deploy that from the balance sheet into your business. Any other strategic plans for marketing or increasing your revenue? So in terms of marketing, it's really committed towards traffic systems with traditional print advertising, but also YouTube testimonials to bring back that human element into Groupon. Groupon are known successfully for the changes that Groupon's made to them to show that they're really a necessity. Is this a sustainable industry? We do believe this is a sustainable industry if the right businesses are targeted and the right consumers, which is why we have such a um, diverse amount of recommendations here today that target a different spectrum. We do see a lot of shifts towards new businesses, for example, or different types of consumers with more of an experience focus. We're targeting the trends of more experience-oriented purchases and service-oriented purchases, and also the trend towards more startups as profitable in this industry. Travel, do you see that as it's something we should emphasize or not? So currently with travel, what we've done to accommodate for this is actually the uh, physical locations to hit tourists who aren't currently on Groupon. That's our initial uh, standpoint with Groupon as a physical location moving forward to help emphasize that through the level.